Hello, I received one of these little Runcam Split Mini 2 HD cameras to take a look at and this is obviously the successor to the Split Mini which I have over here. I've been using this for about a year and I really like this little camera. I was quite surprised at how well or how nice a video it actually makes. Uh, the audio is really shitty but um, the video is pretty good. Uh, it has pretty decent wide dynamic range, um, 1080p60. A little bit extreme um, fisheye, well it's not too bad I guess. Um, and there's a fair bit of lens flare which I know a lot of people don't like but I personally don't mind it too much. So the major difference between the original and the two is obviously that instead of now requiring two separate PCB boards to be connected together with this rather, well I was going to say fragile but it's probably not too bad. There's a sort of a plug that goes between them that processes or transfers a lot of information. It's sort of like about 32 pins on that plug. It's one of those little little fine ones that you see uh, on your computer motherboard, that kind of thing. and Or where you slot in your memory to your computer motherboard, that kind of stuff. Um, so the fact that you don't need that now should make it a little bit more robust, which is nice. Um, another change is that they have removed USB power. So the micro USB power here, which you could power it from while you're flying and also use it to get the video off the SD card so that was nice you didn't need to take the SD card out to get the videos onto your computer but now you do. Uh, not a terrible compromise I think um, it's not too hard to take it out uh, and the other change that I noticed was that it can now be powered from a 4S LiPo so originally it would only go up to 15 volts input so that precludes you from using a 4S LiPo you're only allowed to use able to use three so that's why I have this thing here just to sort of remind me of, I was powering it from um, the balance port of my LiPo batteries like this uh, but now obviously 4S is going to be a little bit more useful um, and I think that that's about all I really know <laughs> of the changes at the moment but um, I've only just taken it out of the box here so I'll have to look into it a bit further and see what other things might have been changed. So this is what you get in the box, the camera, some standoffs and screws, a uh, little metal plate with a tab that goes across the front of where the SD card goes in so that just stops it popping out in the crash. Although it is a push-push style slot so you don't actually need this thing if you're willing to risk maybe popping out in a crash but uh, I think I'll probably put it on, it doesn't really add any weight and it does provide a bit more cover for the little resistors and bits and pieces on top of the board there. Uh, you get one of these things which is really neat. I've seen these appearing on Runcam's site recently. I'll probably get a few of these separately for my other quads too because they're very handy. They make one of these 19mm size cameras able to slot into the older, larger 28, I think it's 28 or 29mm wide um, mounts which I have on a lot of my quads so that's very handy for me and it's a lot better than the um, this kind of a style mount with a sort of aluminium bracket in a u-shape because these tend to get a little bit of jello i find whereas this one um, probably will not and um, what else do we get one of these what do people use these for by the way i've never really figured that out if we can focus so it's, uh, it's got one of those same plugs on each end the only thing i've ever done with these is cut cut it in half there and use it as uh to make it sort of splice it into some other wiring that i need for my camera but um yeah <laughs> So the two plugs that you get here, you're going to have to solder one of the other of these on to something because as you can see here hopefully they're a little bit different size and unfortunately this little plastic plug socket there or that's on there, ground, uh, ground power and video of course, uh, it's the smaller one millimeter size plugs like this. So this is not the kind of plug that goes in there. It's different. So unfortunately you can't just say if you had a quad that had one of these on it, you can't just unplug it and plug it into the back of the split mini, which is a, a real shame because I'm sure if uh, maybe they're just stuck for space there and they couldn't have fitted it on because I'm sure that would have been a little bit more convenient than this one. I think most people would have this size plug ready to go on their quads, but anyway. Um, so one or the other of these you're going to have to solder onto these points here which they have fortunately made uh, very easy to get at so that's ground 5 volts one or the other they're nicely tinned which is good and then the one that's labeled TV out there uh, obviously a yellow wire will go on there look at the microphone there it's quite large isn't it is that 
I wonder if the audio is going to be better on this one. I'm sure the microphone wasn't quite that big before. Anyway, audio doesn't really matter too much, does it? Hey, look at this. I just noticed that the Split Mini 2, $70, is a little bit cheaper than the first one at $80. It's kind of weird, although it does say here that it's not actually out yet, so maybe this is um, sort of a pre-release price or something. I'm just sort of checking the audio at the moment. So I'm inside, so there's no wind. Okay, everything seems to be recording all right, so I'm coming outside now. A couple of things I noticed from that quick test there is that the fisheye effect is quite pronounced, uh, same as the original split. I think they might actually be using the same little module for the camera part of it, and all I've done, all I've done is change the, um, the PCB board section, because on the back of this camera it says Split Mini. It doesn't say Split Mini 2. So it might just be the same thing, and I'm kind of wasting my time testing it. But anyway, right now I'm just checking what the wind sounds like. It's quite a bit of wind. And I also wanted to do a quick test of the lens flare, which we get by sort of looking sideways onto the sun, I think. Let me see. Point it straight at the sun, see what we get there. Point it with the sun in the frame and some darker shadows over there. See how the wide dynamic range does. And I'm pretty sure if there's any lens flare, this kind of a picture here will be able to show it up. And what I'm going to do now is unplug the power while I'm recording. So if you can hear this video, like if I if I uploaded this as part of my video, then it works. Uh, it will finish writing the file even when the power was disconnected. Let's see what happens. Okay, I've gone back to the original Split Mini now, just to do a comparison, because when I took a closer look at the footage that I just got from the Mini 2, Split Mini 2, I noticed a lot of blurring in the corners of the frame. All of the corners, I think. At least the bottom two corners, primarily. So I'm just going to do the same kind of test. Um, same conditions, it's only about five minutes later. And I'll also do this to see if the lens flares are any different with the original split mini like this. Seems like around about here you get a big lens flare, or not a big lens flare, but a very, uh, very strong, small one like that. And uh, okay, that should be enough to see just to check whether there's any blurring in the cornering corners of the image on this one as well. So I decided to take a little bit of a gamble and I'm really hoping that the pins in each of these connectors on the old and the new versions of the camera are the same because I've taken the camera module section from the old one that was focusing properly at the corners of the screen and I've connected that to the new uh, motherboard piece and in the process I discovered that this connector here it doesn't doesn't slide in and out of that socket as the arrow seems to indicate this socket is um, it just pulls directly straight up off the board and here's the old version so you can see there is it's one of those kind of sockets lots and lots of pins on there and that means that you do actually need to put this on to make sure that it doesn't just fall off. So I was just kind of lucky that <laughs> even though I hadn't put a put the metal tab over the top of it, it didn't fall out while I was doing that little test just before. Um, and I've discovered a bit of a problem with this. I think they've put the wrong length of screws into the kit that they give you because um, when you put these through and you try and you know put the screw through there and then this one onto the other side to close it down, these threads are not long enough and they were perfectly okay for this one but I think the reason was because that the board was a lot thinner on the first one so on the left we have the original two boards and look how thick the board is on this side it must be a four layer board or something like that but what that means is you can't get the screws through to to attach this piece um, so hopefully they'll fix that in the future and I should mention that this version that I've got here was a fairly early one. I was supposed to get this about six weeks ago but it got sent to my old house and I only just got it a few days ago so uh, it could be that they've uh, they've realized this and they're giving you slightly longer screws now. Let's hope but I just I can't do anything with these 
as they are, unfortunately. All right, well, I put the original camera module back on, but it's the second time this has happened now, but as soon as I put this metal cover on, it doesn't work. Like, the light doesn't come on and it doesn't record. And now it's fine. It'll start blinking in a minute when it starts recording. There you go. So it's recording. No problem. Well, it just seems that for whatever reason, whenever I put this metal cover on, it doesn't work. So that kind of makes me think, maybe I should try this uh, original Runcam module again because I had the metal cover on when this one was not working, so that could have been the problem, maybe. Um, speaking of metal cover, the uh, tabs here break very easily. This one here broke off just by pushing the screw up from underneath. Um, so be careful with those, they're very, very thin. And the screws that I was using to do this, by the way, I supplied myself, as I mentioned before, the ones that they give you are not long enough. The ones that I'm using are fairly long, and just in case you're thinking that the head of the screw might be a little bit large and touching on something that it shouldn't, I'm pretty sure it's okay, because I think anywhere within that sort of gold area there around the screw holes, focus please, here we go, so the screw head that I'm using, as you can see there, should be small enough not to touch on anything and cause a problem. So I really don't know why it doesn't work when you put the metal tab cover on, but it doesn't. So I'm just going to have to, unfortunately, fly around like that. But that means I'm probably not going to be putting it on a mini quad. I'm just going to put it on a plane or something a little bit more relaxed to fly around. All right, so I've just sandwiched it between a couple of pieces of thin plastic. It's amazingly small and light. Uh, and I think I'll put this on my mini talon and just fly it around like this. Okay, I think that'll do for now. As you can see, it's a very similar camera to the original. The audio is kind of shitty, but the video is pretty good. I think this blurring in the corners that I'm having is just an issue with the lens barrel not being in quite the right position relative to the image sensor. Um, but it's a little bit awkward to tune this because you have to record some video and then take the SD card out of the camera, put it in your SD card reader to look at it in your computer, and then repeat that over and over. So I just couldn't be <laughs> bothered doing that um, for this review, unfortunately. Um, I will actually ask the Runcam people whether you can swap these uh, lens modules sections over with that little ribbon cable because it did occur to me that the label that says main with the arrow on the ribbon is actually printed on the opposite side on these two modules so I thought maybe if you just turned it around the other way and plugged it in uh, it might be okay because it looks like that plug can go in both ways but I just didn't feel like pushing my luck any further than I already have by plugging the different lens module into the different motherboard um, in this video at least um, but yeah I kind of think it's probably possible um, anyway so I guess you've seen some of the video um, not too much more to say very nice and small if you're trying to save every gram this camera is a little bit lighter than the first one it's not really my um, it's not really made for me this kind of camera I think like I fly 5 inch quads so I don't care if the camera's a little bit bigger like a Runcam Split, the original Split, not the Split Mini, that'd be fine for me. And to put on a plane usually the Split or even a larger camera like the Runcam 2 is fine. But if you're into flying the little micro uh, 3 inch propeller size quads, this uh, would be a great little camera for you to use I think. And to be honest I think I was actually happier with the first version of this camera which had the micro USB plug on the side so that you could uh, you could get your videos off of it onto your computer without having to remove the SD card which was much more convenient so for me personally that I think is a bit more of a plus than saving a few grams and having one PCB board instead of two 
Uh, but that's just me. What do you think? Anyway, that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching. See you next time.